This is Matt for Into Boxing. I am delighted to be joined by WBA world champion Lee Wood. Lee, thanks for giving us some of your time. How are we? No problem, me. Um, sound, mate. Sound. Um, just taking over Dynetix with um, the team, with Ben and, and the lads. Um, just playing a bit of a waiting game, too, uh, to be honest. And it's quite frustrating. Yeah, you've been a number of months since your um, epic battle with Michael Conlon. And before we get into the fight and what possibly could be your next move, um, how's it been this sort of time in between? Have you managed to refresh, spend time with family and things like that? Yeah, for sure. Um, I had a little bit of a break. I went out to Dubai and watched some boxing and then I come back and went back to Dubai again for more, for a holiday for like 10 days. Yeah. You know, so um family um but like i said back in the gym um back in the gym for a while now for for quite some time probably over a month or two um so yeah just waiting waiting to find out what's happening and it's a bit of a standoff really we're just waiting playing the waiting game it's so frustrating when you've got momentum and you want to be active um it's very frustrating What's the crack then? Is it a case of y'all waiting on the WBA to make a decision about what they're doing with Santa Cruz? Because we were all under the impression that fight week between yourself and Michael that you'd be elevated to champion or whoever won the fight would be elevated straight after. What what are we doing now? Are we just waiting for, to see what they're going to do with Leo? Yeah, um, I thought that could be one scenario, but in my head I was obviously expected to fight the champion, which I think is better for me to fight the champion to be the champion than just get upgraded. But it's frustrating in its own sense because of how inactive it's been. So really, I should be champion in with any other governing body, but um, that's the decisions they've made. That that's what we've got to stand by. And uh, yeah, we're just waiting really on um, the first bid to, to come out, and the split was uh, negotiating because obviously he's not boxed for three years. And I'm active champion, and I beat everyone that they put in front of me to, you know. I won the title against the champion and then I defended against who they said, saying that's going to be like a, a final limit kind of thing for the super title. So um, I've done everything I've been asked of and now it's time for my shot at the super title and, and things are just going a bit slow. So it's got to wait, really, um, and, and see how it pans out. I don't think no one... I know there's a big thing about regular belts in the sport of boxing, but I don't think, considering how inactive Leo's have been, no one would have begrudged or said, oh, well, he's not the proper champion to be elevated. You were having that super champion status just purely because of your activity. And obviously you beat Kanzu, who was, you know, he was seen as this, obviously, monster and you did a job on him. And then you fought Mick Conlon, got an epic knockout there. Um, so I don't think no one had begrudged you. How, um, what sort of the route you're going to go down if this Leo Santa Cruz thing takes a little bit longer? Are you going to try to get back out before it? Because obviously you want to stay active now. You're on a good run. Yeah, I'd like to stay active. Um, to be honest, I want a big fight. I feel like I've earned a big fight. Um, when I say big fight, someone above me, someone above me, or the all Santa Santa Cruz, um, or Warrington, someone in the top five or six. You know, um, I think I'm ranked at on box. I can, uh, I think I'm five. Then, and Warrington one below yeah. or whatever. But um, someone around that area, you know, I don't want to make a back with step. I don't want to take over fight. I don't want an easy job. I'm 33. I'm nearly 34. Um, I'm in my prime. I want to make sure, you know, I'm getting the, the right fights to prove myself. And a tick over fight against someone, it's not going to do anything for me. Um, yeah. And I feel like I've, 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 I was forced into that last fight with um, the belt situation, um, which I came through. And I've earned it. I've earned that fight. So I just yeah. want that, that big fight, um, whether it's Santa Cruz, whether it's Warrington, whether it's Unification fight, whatever, either either. Um, just let me know what's happening kind of thing. That's, that's the position I'm in. Eddie, Eddie said, obviously, if you win that fight against Conlon, that pretty much books your place at the city ground, where I would have thought he'd be pulling for trying to get you to have this fight. Now, I know boxing's one of them things where people say a lot of things. Um, is that is that deliverable, no matter what you do next? Do you think that is something that can happen? Yeah, I've heard a lot of things. Obviously, it's down to the ground as well. I think, you know, we had the pitch done recently and gone up to the Premier League, which is... Um, Fantastic yeah. for the city, fantastic for the club. And I feel like now's the time to strike why the iron sort kind of thing. But um, you know, if it's not lined up this year, it's not lined up, it is what it is. Um, but you know, it'll happen, it'll probably happen next year. But in the meantime, you know, I've got to I've got to be in a big fight, I've earned a big fight, give me a big fight, and then yeah. next year, you know, 
I, I plan on winning that big fight and next year taking a, a bigger fight and um, being a big occasion and you know something I've always dreamed of and headlined at the city ground. When you look at your options available, because you have got a few, obviously Leo says they've been called and there's going to be some bid to see who is the super champion. But you've also got Warrington out there who has that huge, the huge following and he's a champion now as well. You could do that wherever really that sells. Um, but obviously the fight as well with, with Mick Collin, although at the minute he's not bringing a belt to the table, people have seen that first fight. I mean, it's, I think it's probably the best fight I've seen live. Um people, there will still be a huge clamour for that and big money in it for yourself. Is that sort of, is that in the back of your mind? Would you ever consider running that back if, if, if he hasn't got a belt? Of course. Of course. And a lot of people, especially um, the Colin fans, comment on all my stuff. They comment on my, my photos and videos all the time. Yeah. Um, you know, they're saying, oh, like, you pussy out a rematch. I haven't said that I'm not going to rematch him. Yeah. What I've said is not next. Like I have fought him, yeah. But that fight was for to, to decide who fights Luis Ante Cruz. That's what that fight was for. So you win that fight, then you get to fight him. The right to fight yeah. him. So I beat him for the right to fight him. Then I was like, oh, you, you, you're bitching out of the rematch. I didn't say I'm not going to rematch him. I just said not yet. I said in my own time, I'm champion. I beat him. When when I, when the time's right for me to fight him, we'll fight. And it's not yet because obviously like, I've earned. Like I said, I've earned. To fight in a big fight, I've earned a big fight. Um, so we'll see. I mean, that fight, that rematch makes sense down the line. Two fights or three fights, whatever. One fight, we'll we'll see how it how it goes. But I've earned the right to fight Leo Santa Cruz. Give him the Leo, Leo Santa Cruz fight. I've earned it. That's what that fight was for. Mm-hmm. Um, I feel like it's going a bit slow. We're not hearing much on it, so I might have to get a little bit vocal on on the socials and that, and and, and try push it because it seems like not a lot. Is happening and not many people are um you know kicking heels for me. So I might have to get a little bit vocal. And that's not really me, but you yeah, know, like I said, I'm I'm 30, I'm nearly 34. Time's ticking and I want to be in big fights. Do you think there'll be a scenario where he just changes his mind or says, you know what, I haven't fought that way or whatever for how long? I'm not defending my belt, time's ticking, and he just goes, you know what, I'll um relinquish the title. Would that be I don't say better for you, but you get elevated, what many people thought you would do, and then you have your you have your pick of the pick of the bunch with the like I said with the Warringtons and so Conlon's still a big fight, etc. And you this sky's the limit really for you. Would you sort of prefer that option if just to sort of get on with it kind of thing? Because it's it is dragging its heels for you. Um, yeah, I mean it is it is dragging. To... I'm happy either way. If he vacates and then I get upgraded. Um, there's some big fights out there to be made. I think the biggest fight for the British fans is the Warrington fight. So I'd like to be involved in that. Um, and I'd like to prove, again, a lot of people write me off, I'd like to prove, you know, the level I'm at. Um, but yeah, I mean, even if it's a unification fight, whatever, fight me or vacate, so let me have a big fight or involve me in a big fight and stop stalling, make a decision, you know what I mean? That's where I'm at. I feel like, Time's ticking, so um, hurry up. <laughs> you mentioned there that um, the Colton fans are giving you a bit of stick, saying you don't want the rematch, even though you're in the position to do what you want. <laughs> I spoke to Mick a few weeks ago. He says, you give as good as you've got in terms of are you respectful after the fight? And then he says, you made up for it by you know posting a few knockout pictures up and things like that. She was on the other foot. Trust me when I tell you, I will not hear the end of it. <laughs> and if I was if I was and if I was shouting for a rematch, it would not be giving me one. It would not be thinking about giving me one. And it would not be saying, look, I've said, look, I'll give him his rematch in a few fights this time. I wouldn't get any of that. It'd be like, no, you've been beat. See you later. That would be it. And I promise you that. But I'm a fighter. Um I love fighting. I love challenges. Um, I feel like the narrative of what his fans and he sees the fight is completely off base of what actually happened and mm-hmm. which I think I could do a better job in the in the in the rematch so I want to go out there and prove it in the rematch in a few fights time what do you what do you think when you look at the rematch now because it was in, it was it was honestly incredible to watch from both of you really like <laughs> exceptional performances what what can you do what would you do differently in the rematch would you 
would you go at him a bit earlier? What what would you do? Not to give any game plans away, but everyone knows you you pack a punch. So would you step on him a bit sooner? What what would you think? What would you do? Well, he says, you know, if I'm not like tonight, I'd have on points, which I won. I was coming on strong, which was always the game plan anyway. Um, going into that last round, all I had to do was win that last round and I'd have got a draw. I'd put him down, even if he got up from putting him down, I'd have still won. So uh, that's how tight it was. And bearing in mind, he had a 10-8 round in the first round and I lost my next three or four rounds to get my legs back. And I still managed to stick to my game plan, breaking down, pushing back and pressing him and, and get him over the distance. So I don't know how when he's he thinks he could come and do a better job when he couldn't have had a better start. And I still got my, and I still got my game plan off and, and got the job done. So, you know, I, I pretty much do what I was supposed to do the first time, man, but a better job. A lot better job. How, I'm going to say, we didn't get a chance to speak too much after because it was obviously, it was a strange ending to a fight. You'd got an unbelievable finish, but everyone was concerned because he fell out the ring. We had the press conference. Um, obviously, an emotional time for yourself. Um, what, when you when you look at, when you look back at your performance now, do you just think, wow, like, how did, <laughs> how did I manage to do that? Because when, when you got knocked down, it did take your time for you to find your, to find your legs. And I, I was looking going, this looks like it's, this could be over, and you just kept going and going and going. Do you look back and sort of not pat yourself on the back, but look back at it now with a lot of fondness because it shows what you're all about? Not really, because I said I said all this in the press conference. Um, it's a slight being Mister Med, but I'm not I'm not saying it to be clever. But like I said in the press conference, you can go back and quote it. I said, um, you know, all the things that go around, like being a big puncher, like. And I said, I said, that's not even my best asset. Like, I'm tough as fuck. And I said this, go back to the press conference and watch it. I'm tough as fuck. I'm fit. I'm dedicated. Like, all these things that go around being a champion, like, it's not just my punching power. Yeah. And yeah. I said it in the press conference, um, as well as telling him, look, if you make it to the top round and you're still looking at me, I'm going to knock you around the top yeah. round. And I said that as well. And I even said, like, I don't even know if there's any cameras here, but you can, you can ask Ben, because I told him after. The first press conference in Nottingham, we came head to head and I said to him, don't hold. And he went, I'll hold if I have to. Then I went, don't gas. I even told him not to gas. And I told him not to hold. <laughs> and he still gassed. And he still gassed. And I still knocked him out. And I told him what round I was going to knock him out. So, yeah. I mean, I don't know what more, I don't know what more of an insight I could have gave him. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> but, yeah, yeah. Um, I, I know what like what I've got in my locker and I know what my assets are and um I don't look at look back on it and think, oh I, you know, I didn't know I had that, or I didn't know I had that. I, I knew I had that in the locker. How how much has um the influence so, yeah. of Ren in your corner um helped you in this part of your career? Obviously you had that performance over Kanzu, which was you know blistering, and then you've had this performance over Colin. Has he brought out another side to you or just helped maybe show more of the tools that you've got at your disposal. How's Ben helped you? For sure, mate. I can't even explain it. Um, ben says, like, it's not about the tools in the locker. It's like knowing what to pick for the job. Do you know what I mean? Wrong tools for the wrong job. Got some great tools in my locker. You know, you need to, need to, pick, you need to use the right tools at the right time. Um, since being with Ben, you know, normally I go into a fight without a game plan or just kind of like, you yeah. know, winging it. <laughs> have a crack. Just, yeah, pretty, that's, but I'm laughing about it now, but like, who in the right mind should do that? Like, <laughs> it's like, so, someone says, I read something somewhere like, a shit plan is better than no plan. And that's true. A shit plan is better than no plan. And um, I have a good plan and we have a breakdown for us. Um, Lee Wiley on the team, obviously Barry as well. Um, you know, going to a fight now, knowing exactly what I need to do, how to do it, and where to do it, and when to do it. It's, it's like I feel like it's almost cheating because I know what they're going to do before they do it. Um, typical. Um, right. Well, technical well, issues. Yeah, by the look of it. But we look forward to seeing you back in the ring and do your thing. Hopefully, you get a date sorted out. Um, and yeah, we'll catch up with you on your next fight week, or hopefully in a build-up to a mega fight. Plenty of options on the table. And yeah, um, thanks for giving us some of your time out your day. Appreciate it, Bill. Brilliant, mate. Thanks a lot. And if I hear anything, um, I'll keep you in the loop, hopefully soon. 
Um, like I said, I'm ready to go. I want to keep momentum. Um, my last three fights, Danny, are, like you said, you know, they've, they've been unbelievable, a massive turning point in my career. And I want to keep that going. I want to be involved in bigger fights and fights where I'm very off. I want, I want to be in them challenging fights where everyone goes, he's not got a chance or the majority of people are picking the other person. I want to be in them fights. Yeah. Not many fighters yeah. normally do, but I do want to be in them fights. I don't want to tick of, I could have a ticket of a job and make really good money now. I've been offered really good money for two. I don't want a ticket of a job. Yeah, I yeah. want I want to be in them fights where I'm expected to be up against it and I want to prove myself whilst I'm at my best. Absolutely. Well, you've got some, you've got a plethora of options. Like I said, we've gone through them, whether it be, you know, uh, Santa Cruz, Warrington's huge atmosphere there would be mental. Uh, same with the Conlon one, that would be, just because of what's gone on before, it would be brilliant. So, um, yeah, look, we look forward to seeing you back out and thanks for giving us uh, for sure, for sure. Some, some of your time and we'll, ca- we'll catch up if there's any other news, 100%. Okay, up. Yeah. Brilliant, mate. And I'll talk to you soon. Thanks, sir. Appreciate your time, Lee. Have a good one.